Hello, NASDAQ followers, and welcome to another edition of NASDAQ Spotlight. My name is Leanne Alfaro, and we're coming to you live from Times Square, New York City, from the fourth annual Rethink Cyber event here at NASDAQ, hosted by Team 8. We're talking cybersecurity with leaders in the space, ideas and innovation, led by Team 8, again, creative company creator outside of Tel Aviv, and also a cybersecurity think tank. So joining me right now is Galina Antova, co-founder of Clarity. Thank you for joining us, as well as Don Capelli, who's CISO at Rockwell Automation. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for You're having welcome. us. So let's kick it right off and start by talking about um, cybersecurity in industrial control environments. Why has it become such a hot topic? Last year was pretty much a game changer when it came to cybersecurity in industrial control system environments. For the first time ever, malware was unleashed around the world and it impacted companies in the industrial control system environments. It wasn't targeted at any company in particular, which means that anyone could be a victim. And so it really changed the face of cybersecurity in this environment because we all realized that we all have to be prepared. Absolutely, it was a pretty powerful message because um, the message that was received by the security professionals was that you do not have to be the target to be the victim. So that was on one spectrum of the equation. On the other side, we also had a, an example of a highly targeted attack that was targeting um, a safety system, which is pretty significant because safety systems are automation systems that are meant to basically protect the integrity of the, of the process. And we had an example of that as well um, last year. Um, so I think that across the board, we're seeing a much higher activity in targeting operational technology networks. And that is not a surprise because those networks basically run the world. And so protecting them is extremely important. So in your line of work, which industries are you seeing more, most concerned about these kind of threats? Sectors like oil and gas mm. and the power grid, um, water and waste, they've been concerned for years because we knew that they could be targeted as part of critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But when NotPetya hit last year, it impacted companies, for instance, in food and beverage. Mm -hmm. And they never really imagined that they would be a big target of a cyber attack, but now they realize that they could be. So we're seeing now that no sector is immune, that these attacks might be targeted or they might not be. And so again, every sector, no one is, is immune. And I think that the message that this, the boards and the C-level took out of that um, is really that those networks are starting to be perceived as um, also a means um, of economic warfare perhaps, right? So this is literally what runs our industry. It is not, it's not only the critical infrastructure sectors, there are plenty of reports by the DHS and the FBI um, that there was a uh, foreign nation uh, state uh, presence in those networks, but now we're also seeing a presence in other areas such as manufacturing. And you can imagine that if a nation state wants to target, for example, a specific manufacturing sector within the United States, that could have economic repercussions uh, beyond just disruption of power and water and other services. Wow, so certainly a lot more sectors are alert to these threats. Absolutely, every yeah. single company has an operational technology network, whether that's within data centers or just within buildings. And we're just now um, starting to discover the full spectrum of that because those networks are largely invisible to the um, teams that are protecting them. And it's not just those companies either, it's their supply chain, their mm -hmm. vendors. Mm -hmm. um, last year, the FBI and DHS said that our power grid had been infiltrated by Russia. And they didn't do it only by targeting the power grid, but they also targeted companies like industrial automation vendors and tried to get to yep. the power grid through their supply chain. So it's not just those companies that run industrial control systems. Talk to me a little bit about corporate boards and executives. Are, are they taking action against these threats? What is their kind of notion about the subject? Our board is much more aware of cybersecurity than, um, and it's not just our board, but boards in general. Mm -hmm. um, they read the Wall Street Journal. They pay attention to those articles now about what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, I get questions from our board could this impact us? How, what are we doing about this? So 
Um, I know just from my own personal perspective, our board is very aware, as are boards of companies really everywhere. Absolutely, I would say, uh, you know, the one consistent change that we've seen in terms of the way companies are dealing with like budgets and priority when it comes to industrial cybersecurity is the awareness of the board. I mean, literally every Fortune 500 company that we're engaged with, they have identified it as a priority, they've identified a project and a budget to deal with that. Um, it is unfortunate that it took the media and the media cycles to get to that conclusion, but nonetheless, I think that we're thankful that the awareness is now there and that boards are taking uh, active measures to uh, address that issue. And that is the only way that it could be addressed because up until recently, operational technology cybersecurity was somewhat of a um, uh, 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 shared responsibility between the security team and the operational technology teams. And there wasn't really um, uh, one uh, team that was fully responsible for that. And we're seeing increasingly so the chief information security officers of those large companies taking over the responsibility for securing the networks. Um, and that streamlines the process <coughs> significantly. Now, that's a little bit about what steps people are taking to address these kind of issues, but what other kind of processes are being set in place in order to proactively serve as defense uh, when these cyber right. attacks come about? Well, we're dealing with a very um, uh, challenging topic because we're dealing with networks that are very different, operational technology networks very different than IT networks. The life cycle of that equipment is 25, 35 years, right? So it's um, we cannot necessarily ensure that um, uh, we can just rip and replace the, the architecture of those very complicated and very expensive setups. So what we're starting to realize is that as companies are starting to invest more and more money in kind of the ABCs of cybersecurity protection, which is, you know, segmentation, make sure that your IT network is segmented from your OT network. We're also seeing a lot of investment in um, innovative technology, such as the technology that Clarity provides, which is monitoring solutions, right? Because segmentation projects take a really long time. And the number one thing that you want to know is if, if there's someone in your network. And it's uh, a lot... Uh, about what is the immediate return on investment in terms of being able to identify that someone is in my network that I can have tomorrow versus you know rolling out a, uh, a very uh, time consuming segmentation project. So it's not either or, but companies are realizing that they absolutely must do something tomorrow as even if that's just a small piece of the puzzle. And um, a lot of, just a lot of the companies are realizing that the absence of evidence is not evidence for the absence of the attacker in their networks. They just don't have visibility into those networks. So from my perspective, it all starts with gaining the visibility into the uh, operational technology networks. From my perspective, in, it, in the past, the, the CISO was in charge of IT security. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of companies in the industrial control environment had security engineers that were responsible for security of the OT environment. Mm -hmm. Now, people are realizing, companies are realizing that you can't have two distinct roles. You need to have a holistic cybersecurity strategy. You need to have someone who's looking at IT, OT, the connections between them, the supply chain, third parties, cloud environments, it's all interconnected now, which is why NotPetya was so successful last year. So now companies are really putting together a holistic strategy. And that's new for a lot of companies in industrial control sector environments. So certainly a lot more C-level executives, particularly CISOs and their teams becoming more aware, more alert, mm -hmm. proactively taking the steps to be prepared for these attacks. Right, and in the past, IT security is, is much more mature than OT security. Mm -hmm. So IT security has always, it's gone by identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. In the OT environment, those five segments haven't really been implemented. But now we're looking at it and saying, well, why not? Why can't we just take what we've done in IT mm -hmm. and just do that in the OT environment as well, with different technologies, mm -hmm. perhaps, some the same, some different. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me to talk about cybersecurity. And I hope to see you both on the Rethink Cyber Floor. Absolutely. Thank Appreciate you. Thank NASDAQ you. followers, that has been Galina Antova, co-founder of Clarity, as well as Dan Caporelli, who's CISO at Rockwell Automation. Stay tuned for more coverage right here from Rethink Cyber, hosted by Teammate.